What's up guys, Greg Knuckles here with stringtheory.com and today we ask ourselves the question, which are better, full body or split routines? Actually, we don't. First, we ask ourselves the question, is that even the right question we should be asking? Is that a question that's likely to give us a useful answer? And I would argue no. The reason why is that uh, your response to training isn't static. So there is, there is no single best training routine for everyone in the world or even just for you at all points in time because as you train, uh, your body, it adapts in, in two different ways. One, uh, the stressor uh, provokes an adaptation that is positive. It makes you bigger, stronger, etc. The, the stuff you want to happen. But also, because it's a stressor, your, your body becomes... Um, more efficient at handling that same stressor in the future because remember getting bigger and stronger is primarily a protective response because when you train you disrupt homeostasis and so your body makes your muscles bigger and stronger so they'll they'll be more capable of handling that stressor in the future but also um, other protective mechanisms are in play that makes that particular type of stressor disrupt homeostasis less than it used to. So uh, when, you, when you're training a particular way and you plateau, uh, the, well, the number one thing you should do, well, you can do two different things. You can either increase the type of stressor or you can increase the magnitude of the stressor. So increasing the magnitude of the stressor is, is primarily just ramping up your training volume, you know, adding weight, adding sets, adding reps, etc. But you can't do that forever, obviously. And so at some point, you're going to need to change some of those other variables. And this, uh, this leads into the question of whether you're better off doing full body or split routines. Now, in general, you're probably better off um, spending most of your time or a larger percentage of your time uh, doing full body routines, not necessarily every muscle group every day, but um, including both some upper and lower body lifts because that's that's necessarily, well, it's not necessarily, but it's uh, going to give you opportunities to increase how frequently you're training each muscle and each lift. And in general, uh, training something more frequently to a point is a good thing to do. A uh, few different things are in play. Um, Muscle protein synthesis isn't elevated for too terribly long after a workout. Uh, 36 to 48 hours for a fairly new lifter uh, tends to be somewhere closer to 12 to 24 hours for a more experienced lifter. So uh, if you're only training a lift once a week, muscle protein synthesis isn't elevated uh, for, for that large of a fraction of time. Um, you get more opportunities to practice the lifts you're training, to master them. A um, few other things, but those, those are the two biggies. So in general, higher training frequencies tend to be better. Um, and so, you know, you could train squats and bench, say, both three times a week if you're training six days a week. But if you're training three, four days a week, then generally a full body routine is going to allow for higher frequency. But once your body adapts to that level of frequency, then you have to ask yourself a question, you know, First, can I add more volume per session? And, and you can do that for a while. But when it gets to the point that you can't do that, then you're probably better off dialing back your frequency because even though in general it doesn't carry uh, those, those same particular advantages, the advantage that it does have is if you're only, say, squatting once or twice a week, you know, you may be able to do 8, 10, 12 sets of squats in those workouts. Whereas <laughs> you, you probably wouldn't want to do that same thing four or five days a week. So um, the per session volume can be higher. And so if you've gotten to the point where the volume you can handle for a lift, so I'll just use squats as an example. Um, so if you've gotten to the point where you're training the squat three, four times a week, and you've raised the volume as high as you possibly can for those three, four sessions, and your squat still isn't improving then um, what you can do is you can dial back the frequency and that's going to allow you to push the per session volume higher. And so obviously since, since you weren't adapting, since you weren't getting stronger, um, then whatever you were doing in those three, four days a week apparently wasn't enough to sufficiently disrupt homeostasis 
to cause a beneficial adaptive response. So with dialing back the frequency, you can increase the volume per session. And then even though you're not getting as many sessions disrupting homeostasis, causing those beneficial effects, the sessions that you are getting in do have high enough volume to sufficiently disrupt homeostasis, help you get bigger and stronger. Then, once you've done that for a while, um, your muscles are, you know, you're, you're going to plateau eventually, and your muscles have what they've adapted to is a higher per session volume, but a lower frequency. So then you can ramp frequency back up, keep getting bigger and stronger. So like I said at the start of the video, the question itself isn't a particularly good question. If the question you asked was what what on average has more benefits, higher or lower frequency training or full, or full body or split training, you know, there, there's an answer to that question. It tends to be full body, higher frequency per lift training. But even though uh, even though it has some advantages, that doesn't necessarily mean it's better for everyone. One, because it's not going to be some people's preferences. Two, it's not going to fit in some people's schedules. But then even if, you know, it does fit your preference, it does fit in your schedule, that still doesn't mean that it is necessarily better at all points in time. It may be better for you the majority of the time, but once once you've been doing it for a while, once you've adapted to it, once you hit a plateau, then uh, almost by definition, it's no longer the best thing for you because um, you've just reached a point that continuing to train in that same manner uh, no longer gives you the ability to disrupt homeostasis enough uh, to tell your muscles to keep getting bigger and stronger. Um, so, so that's the basic idea. A paper that I would really recommend everyone watching this video read it's called Periodization Paradigms in the 21st Century, Evidence-Led or Tradition-Driven. It's by uh, strength coach and periodization theorist John Kiley. Um, I very strongly recommend it. One of the things that, uh, that he very rightly points out is that most studies um, comparing different periodization schemes or training programs, the, the biggest takeaway from most of them is just when you put people on a training program that is significantly different from what they were doing before, they tend to get bigger and stronger. So, um, you know, with, with a lot of the training programs that are higher frequency programs, in the studies that actually went through and described the subject's training backgrounds, um, most of them had lower frequency training backgrounds. So the way the studies were set up, it was basically... Um, with one group training essentially how they'd been training before very similarly, and another group doing something that was very different. So uh, the question you have to ask yourself is whether it was necessarily the variables in the study itself um, that caused the beneficial adaptations or just the fact that uh, the program was different from what they'd been doing before. And um, Kylie, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't come down on the totally like nihilistic extreme that nothing is better or worse than anything else, but he does he does rightly point out that um, just just simply novelty, getting people to do stuff they haven't been doing previously, um, seems to be one of the biggest factors. So uh, to wrap up this video, in general, for most people, most of the time, um, higher frequency full body training. Uh, tends to be better. It, it tends to have some advantages that lower frequency uh, split type training doesn't. But at the same time, uh, just because it may be better for most people most of the time, and it may be better for you right now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's better for you, say, three, four months from now, if you plateau with that level of training frequency. Then at that point, uh, you probably would be better off dialing it back uh, using a split routine. And if you've been using a split routine for a while and you've plateaued, uh, you'd probably benefit from ramping your training volume up. So, um, yep, short answer. It's not really the question you should be asking in the first place. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And uh, hey, this is this is two videos in the same week. Um, not not four months between these last two. So uh, I'll I'll see you in the next video, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe it will also be within the next week. We'll just see. All right, bye.